but the power of autogen is flexing right now no need to actually do anything on your side just decide what you need to do and the results that will be generated through autogen and a lot of back and forth communication between large language models I'm gonna give you highest quality results possible in this video i'm gonna show you what is autogen how you can use it and why people are making a giant deal about it so microsoft research just released this block called autogen enabling next generation large language model applications. Now you ask, what is a next generation application? Think about AutoGPT for a second. There was a model that can prompt itself until a goal is achieved. Let's say you ask it to solve a math problem and that's it, that's all you have to do. The model will continuously prompt itself until the problem is solved. If it gets into an error or a solution is not found, it will continue to try to solve it until it is solved. But Autogen is different. Instead of one model, it has lots of models. Maybe a GPT-3, a 3.5 and a GPT-4, a specialized model and a palm model. Potentially all of these models can combine work together to solve a task. More importantly, they have roles. So a model is a strategist, another model is just a coder, and another model is just a critique that critiques all of the results. That's why Autogen is able to give you much more high quality results than normal large language models. The third and most important innovation here is that they are trying to remove humans out of the loop. So human is still there, but not as much involved. So enough talking, let me give you some concrete examples. Here, we have a user proxy agent and an assistant agent. Previously, in normal scenarios, we just have a human and a large language model, but we have augmented that. We have a human, a user proxy agent, that's a large language model that take care of the prompt that generally humans give, but they're gonna give it by himself. And an assistant agent, that's another large language model. So the problem is, that is defined by human, plot a chart of meta and Tesla stock price change year to date. Then the assistant agent gives a code. That code is like, okay, execute the following code. Here, generally humans are involved, but now we have augmented the process. So no need to have a human copy the code and run it. There is going to be another large language model that's a user proxy agent that's gonna take care of that part and says, oh, error package Y finance is not installed. This is the error gave that error to the assistant agent. Assistant agent says, sorry, my bad, forgot about that. Updates the code and then that updated code is once again run by the user agent and output is generated. Here human actually comes into the picture is like, okay, I'm not too satisfied with this results. Maybe you wanna change it. Please plot percentage change instead of this regular change. And assistant agent plots it and that assistant agent is actually not plotting it, it's just giving you the code. And that code is executed by this user proxy agent to plot the graph and you got the graph. So instead of doing one, two, three, four, five back and forth with humans, humans was human was involved in only one back and forth and then one update of the project itself. This is amazing. Now you'll be able to get much more high quality results without actually putting that much effort into it. When you go to Microsoft Autogen GitHub repository, they have bunch of IPython notebooks, but I'm gonna show you four cool ones that I really found interesting. So first one is the stock price one. So we are regularly installing PyAutogen library. So that's that code. Once you install it, you have to set your endpoint. And endpoint is basically what agent models you wanna use. Here we are using GPT-4 and specifics of that. Let's say you wanna use a cheaper model that is GPT-3.5, you can update that. And you put your API keys here. In order to run this code, you actually have to create this simple code that is called OAI config list, where you have to put your model number and your OpenAI API key. Now, let me show you how you can get your API key. So you have to go to OpenAI, then you have to log in. Once you click on login, you have to click API. And then right here, when you click view API keys, you can generate a key. So let's say, for example, let's create a new key and we call it auto gen and then there you go that's your api key don't worry i'm gonna revoke the access to these keys before publishing the video 
but I just wanted to show everyone. So if you don't know, you can actually do it for yourself. Once you do that, here you come and create two assistant, two large language models. First one is called assistant that is actually going to generate the code. And the other one is user proxy agent. This agent, the user proxy agent is actually going to give back and forth prompt suggestions to assistant model so that you don't actually have to get involved every second. And then the question is, what is the date today? Compare the year to date gain for Meta and Tesla. So it's going to actually go ahead. Let me close this and execute the code. And it says, okay, we need to get the year to date gain for Meta and uh, which is Facebook and Tesla. We can do this by using a financial data API such as Yahoo Finance or Alpha. And then it's going to break down the problem. It's going to generate the code and give the code to user proxy agent. User proxy agent is going to run it and it's going to say, oh, the code actually ran today's date is this, but there is an error. The error is time series and the assistant is says, oh, I apologize for the confusion. The error occurred because API response didn't contain the time series. So then it changes and suggests we need to install Y finance gives the new updated code and then the user proxy agent runs the code and it says, okay, another error assistant says, I apologize for the confusion. The command to install Y finance library should run in the command line. So updates the code gives a different version of the code. See all of these back and forth are between a user agent and assistant agent and both of them are large language models a human is not involved so all of these errors are actually solved independently and then the actual final code is generated then you can actually just go ahead and plot the chart so you ask like okay plot a chart for their stock prices this is all code by the way this is all prompts no code so all of these code that you're seeing is generated by large language model and then you can just display the image now all you say is like, oh, we still have to write some code to, you know, generate the plot and display it, but you can do everything in one single go. And this is really powerful. This is where Autogen flexes its capability. So same thing as before, we generated a assistant and a user proxy agent. Both of them are large language models. And then we said, okay, plot a chart of Meta, Apple, Tesla stock price gain year to date. So I just added Apple just to spice it up and all of these things happen independently and we got a plot itself we did not have to do anything if you change the company here it will still do it but the power of autogen is flexing right now no need to actually do anything on your side just decide what you need to do and the results that will be generated through autogen and a lot of back and forth communication between large language models I'm going to give you highest quality results possible. Another great example is to do literature survey. So it is really hard to actually go through a lot of research paper, read them all, and then actually write a final paper that combines all of the knowledge from other ones. Uh, also literature survey in this situation is also really hard to do. So the task is find archive paper that show how people are studying trust calibration in AI board systems. And then it actually goes on its own. The assistant decides what to do. Then user proxy gives feedback on that assistant that, okay, who should I trust? Effects on confidence, trust explanations. And then that feedback is taken by assistant itself. See all of back and forth are happening within it. And then you finally decide, okay, this is enough of the knowledge that I want. Maybe let's plot some graph on it. And then you can say, okay, can you plot a graph that reflects that? And it'll plot number of papers on different topics. So uh, overall, you can say with research about 10, 15 papers, maybe 10, and you didn't have to do nothing. You just decide what to do. Another great example is also uh, group chat with coder and visualization critique. So the task in this situation was download the data from this website and then uh, do data visualization on that. So it says, okay, coder says, first, let's download the data. Now coder is just a large language model. Once the code is given for downloading the data, the critique says, I have reviewed your code and here's the evaluation based on the specific dimensions. Critique critiques the code. 
to improve, it gives suggestion. Then user proxy, this is a third large language model, comes and says, okay, this is the issue. Now, sometimes when you are making a lot of calls to open AI, they give you actually like errors, but this is not one of those errors. It says in line 14, we have this issue. Coder says, oh, I apologize for that. Then updates the code, critique, critiques it, and then user run it. Now user is also facing a lot of errors. See, then coder has to keep on updating the code user proxy just tests it and fails because we have like value error at this point. See a lot of back and forth happening. And finally you have this code that actually works. Imagine you had to sit down and copy the code that coder gives you critique yourself or try to run it, paste the errors in the chat box once again to actually fix the errors. All of these things are happening by itself. So it's going to, change the landscape of large language models and things you can do with it. That's why they named this paper or the blog post next generation large language model applications. Imagine a system where you have your tasks that needs to be achieved and you just give it to it and you are 100% sure that the results that are going to be given to you or presented to you are going to be next level. It's like trying to hire somebody on Upwork. When you hire really high quality people, you just have so relaxed state of mind that you know you're gonna get really good results. It's gonna happen with the large language model industry all in once. It's gonna make a lot of API calls and they sure need to figure out how to make every single call a little less costly because like high-end models such as GPT-4 are really expensive compared to low-end models, but the, re the cost of running these models are gonna come down and down. We have like Orca research paper, textbook is all you need research paper to reduce the size of the model so we can run this all things faster. But imagine having expert domain, large language models that can work together to achieve one single task. This has been Epic guys. If you love the content of AI, consider subscribing to this passionate community and see you in the next video. Also consider subscribing to my also consider subscribing to the newsletter. See you in the next video. It's going to make a lot of API calls and they sure need to figure out how to make every single call a little less costly because like high end models such as GPT-4 are really expensive compared to low end models. But the re the cost of running these models are going to come down and down. We have like Orca research paper, textbook is all you need research paper to reduce the size of the model so we can run this all things faster. But imagine having expert domain, large language models that can work together to achieve one single task. This has been Epic guys. If you love the content of AI, consider subscribing to this passionate community. Also consider subscribing to the newsletter. See you in the next video.